use Python to create native desktop apps that run on Windows, Linux and Mac using the same code on each platform. Here's how to do it. The first step is to download and install Python, ensuring it's added to Path. Then we create a virtual environment to keep our dependencies organized and the folder for our project. We activate the environment and install wxpython using pip. We are ready to start coding. Open up your favorite editor and create a new file named main.py. A frame is a window in wxpython. It does not have any controls or elements at this point. We will add them shortly. Next comes the application class, where we create our frame. In the main part of our script, we create the app and run its event loop. We execute the script by typing Python and the file name in the command line. And here's our first wxpython window. We can adjust its starting size by calling setSize. The from deep part is important. It ensures the dimensions are scaled correctly for high density displays. The DIP part means density independent pixels. You should always use those when dealing with hard coded pixel values. Let's add some controls. First, an empty panel acting as a container. Note the self parameter. This means our panel will be a child control of the frame. Next, the static text. This time we use the panel as the parent control, building a hierarchical structure with the frame containing the panel and the panel containing the static text. When we run the app, we see a panel with the default background color and our text. However, when we zoom in, the text is blurry. Here's how to fix this. Create a new file named utils.py. Add the ensure HDPI function, which calls the Windows API directly and sets up per monitor DPI awareness. Then in the main file, import that function and call it when the app initializes. Now the text looks correct. Let's experiment with the layout. We create a sizer which will handle automatic positioning and stretching of our controls when the window size changes. The simple vertical box sizer organizes the UI elements in a vertical stack. First we add a stretchable empty space. Then comes our static text. This numeric parameter is a proportion. The value of zero means we don't want the sizer to change our element size in any way. Next, we specify how we want to position the element in the horizontal direction. Finally, we add another stretch spacer and assign the sizer to the panel. As you can see, our text is now centered both vertically and horizontally. Here's how this works. The sizer organizes elements in a vertical stack. The first one is a stretchable spacer. This is an empty transparent element that stretches in the direction of the sizer. Next we have our text and then another spacer. The combination of two stretchable spacers is what ensures the text element is centered vertically. The parameters we use when calling sizer add control stretching and alignment of our UI element. It's important to understand that the numeric proportion argument controls stretching in the direction of the sizer, but the positioning flags like align center work in the opposite direction. In our case, this flag centers the text horizontally. All right, let's make our app interactive. We create a button, again using the panel as the parent control, and add it to our vertical sizer. Then we bind the click event to our custom onButtonClick function. Every time the user clicks the button, the framework will call that function and show a simple message box.
And indeed, that's how this works. Instead of just a message box, we can use more complex dialogues. Here's the default file open dialog, configured to show the text files. If the user confirms the file selection, we show a simple message for now. Let's read and display the file's contents. We remove the static text, remembering to delete it from the sizer as well. Then we create an editable multi-line text control to hold the file data. When adding it to the sizer, we use different parameters this time. First, the proportion is 1. This means the text control will stretch vertically. The expand flag, just like align centered before, controls the opposite direction so that this UI element will fill all the available space. This works well, but our button could use some margins. We add the wxall flag, which means that the following parameter will be interpreted as padding in all vertical and horizontal directions. We use 10 density independent pixels for that padding. It looks good, but we still show a message when the user clicks the button, instead of loading the file. Let's change this. We use dialog get path to get the full file name and open it for reading. Then, with just one line, we read the file contents and update our text field. That's all the logic we need. If something goes wrong, we display an error message and our app is ready. With a few lines of code, we created a simple text viewer application in Python. This app also works on Linux and Mac without needing any code changes. Thanks for watching.